Her mother was researching spiders in the Amazon right before she died. We're talking about Cassandra Webb, aka Madam Webb. Hi, I'm Nando, and in these videos, I take a character from Marvel Comics. I talk about their background, their power set, their personality, and I give you some reading recommendations. And this is all because this week, this character is being introduced into the collectible card game, Marvel Snap. Most of this is just talking about the character from the comics. Okay, Madam Web, real quick. If you saw the movie, just throw that all right out the window. There's like maybe two things that line up with this character. One is kind of the powers, although that, that doesn't really make that much of a difference. And two is that her name is Madam Web, or like Cassandra Web is the character that that technically is. Pretty much everything else, unnecessary, uh, will not come up in the comic origin of Madam Web. One more thing before we get into the comic character. I remember when this movie was announced and so many of the articles, like by like Variety, Deadline, and all those websites and media outlets, used the picture that is the one where... Madam Web has red hair and was wearing a red coat and is like leaning back on a wall and looking cool. That is not the Madam Web we're going to be talking about today. That is a different character, like the second incarnation of Madam Web. And that's not really who is on the Marvel Snap card, but it's also not like what you should think of when you think Madam Web. I imagine most of the people writing the article who weren't huge fans of the comic character Madam Web, who can blame them, just saw that this was what Madam Web could look like and then you know, she kind of looks like Dakota Johnson. Dakota Johnson's not playing the old lady, so it must be that. And it would seem like that. That would make sense, especially since Madam Web in the movie wears that red coat that you would associate with that version of the character. That is Julia Carpenter, the character in the movie played by Sydney Sweeney, uh, is a completely different character than the Madam Web we're going to be talking about. So Madam Web, Cassandra Web, first appears in Amazing Spider-Man 210. This will be the first important issue for Madam Web. It was written by Dennis O'Neill with art by John Romita Jr., Joe Sinnott, Bob Sharon, and Jim Novak. It is the introduction to this character. I think it's a pretty solid introduction. And I, I do remember more or less this was the character's introduction in the animated series as well. Uh, Madam Web is a fortune teller that a friend of Spider-Man's or Peter Parker's is going to see. And Peter Parker, being a man of science, is like, that's not even real. You shouldn't listen to those people. And then Peter Parker finds a similar flyer when he is looking at a crime scene. And he goes, hmm, this Madam Web person, I wonder if they're involved. So he goes, checks out Madam Web's house, just like breaks into their house. Even though, like even in his head, Peter Parker's like, it's probably not Madam Web. It's probably not this random psychic it's just a coincidence, but I should break into her house anyway. But when he breaks in her house, he finds this, this humongous web thing and the character that will be known as Madam Web. So what is the web thing? What's her deal? So the web thing is a life support system. First of all, this is important. Madam Web has a neurological disorder. And even though in the movies, she does not have a neurological disorder. That's why Madam Web's mom was in the Amazon researching spiders right before she dies. She wanted to cure this condition. So Cassandra Webb has a chronic autoimmune disease known as myasthenia gravis. Now, I don't know how much research they did when they actually gave the character this disease in the comic or if they just saw kind of what this was and went, oh yeah, that's that's kind of like what, you know, we want this character to do. Uh, but it seems to be a disease where your nerves don't communicate uh, well with your body and your muscles atrophy or something like that. It's very broad strokes, but that is kind of how Madame Webb is presented. Uh, she cannot walk. She cannot breathe and like do things like that on her own. Her husband built her a special chair that also happens to look like a big spider web that would, you know, do all of those bodily functions for her. So it is a humongous life support system. I want to say she can't live without it, but I'm pretty sure at a couple times she is forced to live without it and she does OK. So let's just say she cannot live for very long without it or uh, you know, at the height of her power or something like that. And what are her powers? Well, Madam Web is a mutant. Now, I believe this has changed over time, but I think canonically she is a mutant. She has powerful psychic abilities. She can sort of see the future and read minds, things like that. This is one of those stories kind of like Daredevil where you lose a sense or you lose something, but you gain a superpower that is kind of like that. So Madam Web, you know, cannot see, but she can see the future. So Madam Web shows up in Spider-Man's life and she's like, hey, I know you're Spider-Man. What you're doing is cool. Here's how you can stop the crime you're working on, and you should listen to me. And Spider-Man's like, this seems super suspicious, but he follows her advice, and he ends up solving the crime. Now, the advice she gives and Madam Web's powers usually come in the form of that. I think like Destiny works like this sometimes, where you don't see the full future. You see flashes of possible futures. So sometimes what you're seeing will happen, but a lot of the time, 
you will see, you know, some of the scenery maybe or the time or something like that. And there's also the understanding that the future can be changed. She'll sometimes see like different versions of the future at the same time too. She'll see a version where this character dies and a version where this character dies and, you know, so on and so on. So she's, you know, helpful. Obviously she's better than nothing, but she's not able to just solve all of the problems immediately. And sometimes her advice tends to be cryptic. Part of that also comes with just her being a medium and like presenting as, you know, a fortune teller kind of character. So we bump into Madame Web a few times in Spider-Man history. Juggernaut and Black Tom come and try to steal her. I think it's interesting because she's one of a few mutants that works with Spider-Man. Doesn't really have any connection to the X-Men. There was one comic very recently that did like a what if thing. And she was on the Council of uh, Mutants Leadership. The Quiet Council in Krakoa. So she has technically kind of worked with them. But more or less she stays in the Spider-Man realm of stories. And she's never, you know, hunted by the Sentinels or anything like that. At least not as far as I can remember. The next big part of Madame Web's history comes from a series called The Gathering of Five. And this is what I will say is the second important issue for Madame Web. So yeah, this is an issue that covered a bunch of Spider-Man books. But the one we're going to focus on here is Amazing Spider-Man 441. It's written by John Byrne with art by Raphael Kayanen, Bud LaRosa, Matt Hicks, Mike Rockowitz, Richard Starkings, and Liz Agrafoitis. So this ritual is set up by Norman Osborn. He is trying to get power because that's what you do if you're Norman Osborn. And the ritual specifically involves five people, each bringing five relics, and then you do a magic spell, and people seem to randomly get certain things. So you may get power, or wisdom, or death. And it's a magic-y thing, so like, you don't get what you think you get. You get one thing, but then it turns out to be the other thing. Madam Webb is here for this. She's just out walking around without her life support system, and I'm not sure exactly why she's here, except for maybe she could see the future and knows how this is going to go. This is also a story that involved Maddie Franklin. I would say Madam Webb spends most of her time with Maddie Franklin because she becomes Maddie's mentor in the Spider Woman series that Maddie Franklin headlines. But Madam Webb takes part in this ritual. She's the first to get her gift, and it's death. She dies. Now, it turned out that wasn't death. That was immortality or eternal youth or something like that. Because later, Madame Web just shows up again. This is in the Spider-Woman comics. And she's just like, hey, I'm a young person now. Uh, the thing worked differently than you would expect. And I am going to train you. Now, in a way that's true to the movie, Madame Web does mentor the spider children. They fight a spider woman uh, who is another. There's This is a rotating kind of cast of spider women. So, obviously, you have... Julia Carpenter, but you also have Jessica Drew, the original Spider-Woman, Manning Franklin. Anya Corzon, I don't think is too present in this group now, but she is happening around the same time. We'll talk about Anya next week. But Madame Webb acts as a mentor to Maddie Franklin. One thing that's interesting about this Spider-Woman series, and something that Maddie does say near the end of it, is like she's fighting her own villains, uh, and they are all weird. Not all of them, but they're very frequently like weird magical villains. And late in the game, Maddie's like, man, I've seen like people Spider-Man fights. That's not what this always is. It's usually like robot guys. I want a robot guy. I don't want any more of these people with curses, turns me into a skeleton. Like it's just too much. I'm, I'm with you, Maddie. It seems like a lot. But I think part of that comes from the fact that you got your power from a magic ritual and you are trained by another person who got their eternal youth from that magic ritual. Now, Cassandra Webb does eventually become old again. I'm not sure how this happens, but I mean, not in such as time. She seems to lose the immortality that she got from the gathering ritual, but it doesn't matter because there's one more important thing that Madame Webb is going to do in her life, and that is die for this time for real. And yes, she does eventually come back to life for a little bit, but more or less, this is like this character's death because this is where she passes on the mantle to Julia Carpenter. This is from the storyline Craven's Grim Hunt, which I talk about in my Why is the Dialogue So Weird in Madam Web video. Specifically, we're going to say important issue number three is Amazing Spider-Man 637, written by Joe Kelly with art by Michael Lark, Marco Cicito, Stefano Guadiano, Matt Southworth, Brian Thies, Matt Hollingsworth, and Joe Caramagna. And this story is kind of like the movie Madam Web, and again, I talked about this in that video, specifically how, but basically the Craven family uh, starts hunting spider women. They're like, we gotta get the spider women. And this all has to do with resurrecting Craven. So this story features most of the spider women, all of the spider women from the Madam Web movie. Maddie Franklin is killed in this series. She's sacrificed and it doesn't work, brings back like a zombie version of Craven or something. Uh, the rest of them are all imprisoned, and Madame Web is eventually killed by the leader of the Cravenoff family because she's mad because this whole plan didn't work. And Madame Web uses her last breath to give Julia Carpenter 
the Madam Web power. So Julia Carpenter is Madam Web from this point forward, and Julia Carpenter always had red hair in the comic, so she's the character that's in that image twirling the key around. And I believe Julia Carpenter was Madam Web in the animated series. I think this transition made sense because Julia Carpenter has like Psy Web, so she is kind of like already different in a way from like Jessica Drew and regular Spider-Man and all those guys. So yeah, she's that character from here on in. It doesn't come up very much. Uh, a lot of the Spider books in the 2010s forward, which is when this happened, after this was all Into the Spider-Verse, Edge of Spider-Verse, all that stuff. So there were a lot of books where all the Spider-Men teamed up. So that would usually end up getting Julia involved. But yeah, outside of one resurrection event, Madam Web has not really made a reappearance, which isn't shocking since the movie wasn't very popular. Although I could have sworn she was going to come back again. I can't remember when this was, but I'm pretty sure Madam Web is involved in some event or something like that in the near future. So I don't know, maybe we'll get more Madam Web coming up. So Powers, it's that very vague fortune telling where she can kind of tell you some things, can't see every version of the future, she can read your mind. In personality, she works like that. She's cryptic, she'll tell you what to do, but she won't tell you exactly what to do. You'll get mad at her and she'll say, that's exactly what I wanted you to say. You know, she's one of those kind of Yoda uh, mentor figures. All of the characters she's friends with and connected with are Spider-Man characters. Like I said, Maddie Franklin is the character I think she spent the most time with. Uh, but Julia Carpenter is the character she passes the mantle to. Anya Corazon is around for some of that time. Anya Corazon comes around during the Totem, Spider Totem storyline. Again, we'll talk about it. But those are the three Spider Women, especially since like during the Grim Hunt, for example, that was a 2010 story, Secret Invasion, the story where Jessica Drew turned out to secretly have been you know, captured by the Skrulls and all that. That was 2008. So like that was what that character was doing around that time. And I do think the best Jessica Drew book comes after that. But I wouldn't say she's as connected to Madame Web as these other guys. And obviously Madame Web spends a lot of time with Spider-Man and the various spider clones that are around. She's interacted in the past with like Jessica Jones. But again, this is not an incredibly consequential comic character i think she has about 40 issues of actual appearances and a lot of those appearances are pretty short there's very few issues of comics devoted to madam webb and yeah in the movie she's played by dakota johnson she's a paramedic who does not have a neuromuscular disorder even by the end of the movie yes she is blind and paralyzed because spoiler alert she got beamed in the head by a firework and that was the result of that so she does kind of turn into madam webb by the end of the movie but also it's like she's a young woman so it's it's just it's very very different in marvel snap madam web is a two cost one power with the ongoing ability you can move one of your other cards away from here each turn so right off the bat like this is a card that is going to change the move archetype move has needed this for a while and i think it's cool and we'll get into this next week too how many of the spider characters are connected to movement some of the villains benefit from movement some of the villains punish movement some of the villains get in the way of movement like even like a green goblin takes up a space in your lane but yeah like spider-man's moving around miles morales gwen stacy but one of the problems with move is you just don't have as much freedom as it seems like you need for that deck to work but madam web seems like she's gonna make this archetype way more dependable and i think it makes sense thematically the spider characters come to madam web for guidance and then they leave her they don't hang around madam web but she does you know send them off so like a character like dagger for example who is also a mutant so there's that connection but all these characters are going to be able to leave madam web space and that's going to give them the boost in power like a human torch or a vulture and you pair that with a hercules and there's so much you can do and you know i don't think she combos especially well with spider-man but she combos quite well with like vulture human torch arania is going to give this more flexibility especially with the activate power which again we'll talk about next week I wouldn't say she works super well jessica drew julia carpenter maddie franklin not in the game although they are giving this madam web a julia carpenter variant but again it's like with madam web i just don't expect people to know that that's not also madam web like you would assume you would see that version of the character and go oh that's what she used to look like back in like the 60s when this character came up or you know even just in this character's history like maybe that's a recent comic and that's why it doesn't look like an old you know issue from a comic but like that's what she used to look like and then she gets paralyzed and she turns it nope that's not how madam web works but I understand why people would assume that. It's funny because she's kind of the Spider-Man version of Professor X, especially when the events become about like the web and, you know, connecting the Spider-Verse and multiverse and stuff like that. And like the video games where she pops up. Uh, and it's funny because she will be kind of the anti-Professor X because you can move any card that's on her space into a Professor X space, so space that's otherwise blocked out. 
Uh, and I imagine then she'll work really well with Professor X. Like if Professor X on your side, you can do a lot with. You know, works well with Gwen, works well with Miles because people are moving, Miles will be free. I don't know, works pretty poorly with Kingpin. I guess if you've got a Kingpin, that's a pretty good way to counter Madam Web and make it so that, you know, you can't move uh, characters into those lanes. But yeah, especially now that move doesn't automatically lose to Professor X. Like, I think giving so much freedom two characters giving them the ability to move so much really should make this archetype work i'm very excited curious to see how it works i'm assuming there's gonna be lots of junk decks and stuff like that which is fun because then the green goblin and hobgoblin will come in to like ruin things for spider-man but you know i think under the right circumstances this can be a very fun card people have brought this up there are currently three madam web cards that have been data mined like three different variants the first is the ryan kincaid and Wardo mello like it's fine you know it's it's what she looks like uh, the second one is the in Hyuk Lee variant, which just looks like that first one again, right? Like, it's a slightly different angle, but it's not a more dynamic pose. And I've seen Madam Web covers. I think if you even if you Google Madam Web, like one of the first images that comes up is like just from an angle. But yeah, like that's kind of an interesting angle. That's the kind of thing you would expect to see on a variant, but not that one because it's it's just so similar. And just considering how much I like this card, I would get the variant. Like I'd burn a spotlight key on it potentially if I thought it looked cool, but I just don't think it looks very cool. And then, like I said, there's another Ryan Kincaid Eduardo Mello variant that seems to be based on the Julia Carpenter version of Madam Web, but you know, it's fine. It's it's different. Um, I do think you can get a little bit more artistic with this character, and I hope in the future, you know, we get some cool stuff with them. Uh, I think the Madam Web Silk Eliath Spotlight is very good. Like if you don't have those cards, that's super valuable. And yeah, let's see how she plays out, but I think she could be a big deal. I would say the new enemy of Madam Web is going to be Red Guardian. If Red Guardian shows up a lot, then like Red Guardian should just be able to counter Madam Web, especially since she's a low power card. But still, like, I don't know, you put, an, put a Cosmo there and you're good. So next week we're doing Aranya. If you enjoy these videos, I put them on Nebula one week early. So if you want to get the scoop on Madam Web and know more about Madam Web than all your friends even before the card comes out, that's on Nebula. You can use the code the Nando Cut to subscribe. That helps out the channel. But yeah, other than that, just like, subscribe, whatever you do on whatever platform you're using. I'm the Nando Cut here and Nando V Movies pretty much everywhere else. That's all I got. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.